So if I can change my perspective about the things that I in, in, encountered, if I can change my perspective about the things that I endured, then guess what I do? I reclaim the power that I need to move forward in faith. Wow. But if I if I don't look at what I went through in the space where I, I have a proper perspective, then what I will do is operate from a preservation perspective. Come on, where bro. now I will just be working to preserve my broken pieces. I'll, I'm just going to work to try to make sure that I don't get hurt again, that I that I'm not disrespected again, that I'm not dropped again. And if you are living a life where your focus is to prevent you not getting hurt, then you can never live a life where you are fully committed to stepping into everything that God has in store for you. Because every step now, you'll be judging through the lens of, you'll take a step and say, oh, let me let me check it. Does that look like what I just came out of? Did, does that look like something that I, I don't I don't understand? Is it is, is this a safe space? And because the truth of the matter is, we got to get to these places of knowing that the spirit of fear wants to grip us and 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 shift our focus of what we came out of to the to remind us of the pain. And what we won't be able to identify is how God was trying to use the pain as a tool for our promotion. Come on, bro. Because the breaking there developed me in that season so that when I stepped into what God actually has in store for me, I have the wisdom and tenacity and the strength to sustain it. But we get so led by the fear of repeating the same hurt. Come on, bro. Like it's 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 in the space of how can we get to a moment in time where we're not we're no longer afraid of repeating the thing that hurt me the last time. You know, there there are certain times where I have to understand that in everything that God does, we see his principles, we see his heart and we see how he moves where he, he he's, he's a principal God that will put us in places where we can learn what we need to learn in this season. So if I'm going into, it's like a soldier who's going into, um, you know, boot camp. When you go into boot camp, you you know that it's going to be early mornings. You know, it's going to be late nights. It's going to be a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. It's going to be people screaming at you, yelling at you. It's going to be people who are not going to be concerned about your well-being. And their mm. whole goal is going to be to break you. Why? Because if you can, if I can push you past your breaking here. When you get into war, you will have the tools necessary for you to come out alive. Wow. So you won't be driven by your fear. You'll be driven by the fact that I've been here before. Jesus. I, I know what this feels like. Okay, well, this looks like that. So guess what? Let me stop and pause here and let me remember. Let me let me remind myself of what the what I came out of so that I Jesus. know that if I beat it, then I can beat it again. Versus saying that looks like what it, I just came out of. Let me run for the hills. But Jesus. it's in a space of knowing that God is not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power, love and the sound mind. so much. So, bro, did you know that God told people or he said, fear not 365 times in the Bible? Come on, bro. Fear not is listed 365 times in the Bible. Jesus, What's the natural you. takeaway? Is that every day I have a, at least one time where God is telling me, don't be afraid. Come on, bro. Every day I have a moment where God is saying, don't be afraid. So I, I can hear people saying, well, if he's saying, don't be afraid and I'm afraid, how do I then transition out of my fear? And this is something that I've never heard. And, and when I heard it, it was like, OK, oh, uh, I had to sort of wa walk through it. And I want your thoughts on this. What yes, I realized is that. One of the main ways I was able to overcome fear was to adopt more fear. Hmm. And it was like, okay, well, what does that mean? If, if you're afraid of being broken again, yeah. then, then how do you then adopt more fear to counteract my fear? Wow. Is that I realized that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. So when I'm afraid in a situation, once I begin to adopt and build up my healthy fear and reverence of God, oh my then my gosh. fear of him 
will then put me in a place where I start seeing my issue in its proper perspective because it's, 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 it's understanding that I may not be in a space where I can see the things or, or what's going to come out on the other side. But what I do know <laughs> that the one who holds tomorrow, I have access to. That's good. And and my fear of, of, of or reverence or healthy understanding of who God is overrides my fear about the situation. It's like it's like if you have a friend who tries to get you to stay out later than the time that you were scheduled to be home. Now, I don't know about you. I had to be home before the streetlights came home. Right. <laughs> And and you may have a friend that says, hey, we, let's just stay out a little longer because my parents, you know, they don't really care. You know, I, you know, and that was one of those things I had to say, you you don't know my mom. Right. You mm. you, you don't know my mom. Now, I, I, I understand. And, you know, I may have a little fear of looking like, uh, you know, I'm lame because I got to go home. But my <laughs> fear of my mom. Come on, bro. Overrode the fear of what people's opinions were going to be. That's good. So then now if I'm in a place where the fear of, of my father and my, the fear of God, the healthy, healthy reverence and understanding of who he is overrides yeah. anything that comes up against me, I can go back to my situation, my sickness, my breaking, my, my disappointment and say, but you don't know my dad, though. You you, you, you you don't know my dad. I, I know I know what you guys are saying, and I know you may not Man. like me, and I know this may be this may be hard to to digest, but but I know my dad, and because I know him and have a healthy reverence and understanding of him, wow. when I elevate my fear of who God is, wow, then it minimizes the fear of my situation. My God, because I now understand. That if I'm looking to him, who's the author and the finisher of my faith, then the things that try to come and distract me as 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 people or as, as situations or as loss, as lack, as stress, as frustration as to whatever it is, I realize that the one who I look to has oh, more bro. power and authority over the things that I'm looking at. My God. So instead oh. of looking at, I look to. And as I look to, I see that he who holds tomorrow is already in tomorrow working on my behalf. Jump in there, bro. Jump in there. Tell me oh, what you think on that. Oh, my God. Tell me what First you think part, on that. We can close right here. Let me <laughs> get out of here, bro. Close right here. That, that is so empowering to me, man, to say that healthy fear of God empowers us to face everything to say, but you don't know my God, though. And I think about that. Second Timothy first uh, one uh, and seven, it talks about God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love and a sound mind. And we say it so cliche like, yeah. but with this empowered state of mind and this empowered perspective, it allows us to be in position to be on the offensive. Like a lot of times we're on the defensive, like, oh, don't be fearful. But nah, I'm walking into this situation with a perspective and I'm equipped with a perspective that allows me to trample fear. Because yeah. if you don't trample fear and if you don't attack fear, fear is going to attack you. And here's how you know, because some people don't know that they're being attacked by fear because you don't realize how fear attacks you. If you if you read that scripture, it's telling you in the capacities that fear has come to cripple. Fear has come to Ooh. cripple you in power, in love, and of sound mind. So if you come on. detect where you're lack where where you're operating in fear, just detect where you're being uh, um, um, confined and you're being restricted in love. Look at the areas you're being muffled and stifled in power. Look at the areas that sound mind and self-control is being attacked. Those are the areas that you know that fear is growing in your life. And I love that because that empowered state of mind is faith. It is, yeah. I trust God, which is faith. Because I trust God doesn't mean I got the answer. Mm. It doesn't mean I know how I'm going to be healed or when I'm going to be healed. It doesn't mean I know who my spouse is going to be. It doesn't mean I know how my children are going to get over this, this diagnosis. It, it simply means I'm coming. I'm going with God. I yes. go with God. And I'm thinking, I'm just my, my mind. I'm just thinking about the, the impossible situation that the, the Hebrew people endured when they were uh, leaving Egypt and they had, Pharaoh and the chariots behind them, but in front of them, there was a Red Sea. So they had impossible in front of them and impossible behind them. Yeah. All they knew is that Moses said that he's going with God. 
And Moses said, let's go towards where the sea was. Mm. It didn't say, let's go to where the dry land was. It's let's go to where the sea is because God is God is going with us. Yes. This idea that God is going with us, even if it's towards impossible, I would rather choose impossible with God yeah. than impossible without God. And Ooh. that's this idea, like, even if going forward looks like death, death can't be the worst. Here's the thing about fear. Here's the thing about fear. Fear causes you to expect the worst possible thing. Yeah. But here's the thing. I'd rather go into the worst possible thing with God. Yes. Because if there's anybody that knows how to handle the most impossible, the worst possible thing, it got to be God. So yeah. if I'm going to go through it, I just, I'm going to go through holding on to his principles. I'm going to go through believing on him. And also, it's just this level of, you remember that, that, uh, that Van Damme movie where, you know, he was fighting and then they threw, what, what happened? They, uh, they threw something in his eye. Blood sport. Some, uh, yeah, blood sport. And they threw yeah. something in his eyes. And that originally when it, when it went in his eyes, he, he became frantic. He was just looking yeah. around like, ah, oh, what's going on? And then he started to think about the teachings of the sensei. And then what happened? There was a settling yes. of his heart. And he somehow was able to gain positioning to fight, even though he couldn't see. And mm. this is what happens with that type of healthy fear and faith. It's not that I could see better. It's just that now I'm in tune with what the father said. Yeah. I'm in tune with what the sensei taught. And so it's like, okay, I know my op opponent thinks they have an advantage because I can't see. Yeah. But darkness and death has no idea that I'm standing with the creator of heaven and earth. This sickness, this diagnosis has no clue that I am standing with he that has the power to bring life and take it away. I'm standing. I don't know. They, they might have legions and they might have demons. Yeah. And I don't know. Nobody might have been able to cast it out before. Nobody been able to go, go through that level of deliverance. Nobody has been able to overcome that many years of addiction. Nobody's heart has been able to heal from such abuse. Nobody has been able to do that. But I'm going with God. Yeah. So even if what is standing before me is as dark as impossible, as long as I'm going with God, it, as long as I'm going with God, it is better than going without him. With God, I can face impossible. With yeah. God, I can face darkness. With God, give me your diagnosis, Mr. Doctor. I'm going with God. If you I'm could, going bro, with him. people don't know your testimony. Every time I think about your testimony, my mind is blown at how you were literally sitting in a situation where you were fully functioning yeah. and reverting to someone. Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. No, bro. Just it's, it's so in 2000, I had a sinus infection that spread to my brain and fluids gathered on my brain and caused me to have a stroke that left me paralyzed on the complete left side of my body. And doctor said I would die or live in an unresponsive state. And there, there was no history in my family. There was nothing that was indicative of as to why I was in this situation and I was healthy. There was no things that were like signs to say, you know, I wasn't in and out of the hospital, but all of a sudden now I'm paralyzed and they are telling me to smile and only the right side of my face is moving and they pricking my hand till it bleeds and I can't feel anything. And, and now I have to relearn everything I've ever known how to do from buttoning a shirt to brushing my teeth to walking all of the things that I took for granted because I did them so unconsciously, I now had to relearn them things, uh, those, those things. And what you are saying, man, is literally speaking my testimony, brother, because as I laid in the hospital bed, I had to make a choice. And I'm not going to be honest and say that I was full of faith the whole time. There was a season where I felt like this is just where it ends. This is where life is over for me. And I don't know why, but I guess this is it because there's no way that I could see myself coming out of this. And after having brain surgery and, and I would have tubes that were in my face and in my chest and they had me on the feeding tubes because I couldn't eat and, and all of these things. And it got so dark for a second there. And there was a moment 
where I had to lean into the darkness to understand that his spirit was in the darkness. When you go back to the creation story, it said darkness uh, uh, was over, over the face of the, and the spirit of God moved in the darkness and the darkness, co darkness comprehended it not. And when I realized that the dark moments were, were uh, uh, sort of orchestrated for me to, to comprehend and see the spirit move in a way that I wouldn't be able to understand that Shit. there was nothing for me to be able to put the pieces together to say, okay, well, I know this is going to happen and this is going to happen. But it was in the darkness that I saw the spirit move. Ooh. And then the darkness had to recede because when God shows up in the darkness, see, here's the truth. Every crisis is just an opportunity for me to learn who Christ is. Come on, bro. Every time I step into a dark place, Ooh. It's God giving me an opportunity to learn more about him. See, we want to learn about God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus. We want to learn about God on the mountaintops. We want to learn about God as the God who blesses and the God who uh, makes us rich and add no sorrow. But God is saying, if you really want to know me, come into this darkness. If you really want to know me, come up on this cross. If you really want to know who I am, I need you to lean into the places that are uncomfortable, the places that make you scared because because the darkness you can't see and you have to rely on me. When you're talking about the, the, the movie, he couldn't see and he start thinking about the things he was taught and start relying on his senses. Come on, bro. So he couldn't see, but now his, his hearing was heightened. So now in the darkness, I may not be able to see, but I start listening more so the on, spirit bro. can give me insight. So when the enemy swings, I don't have to move or I don't have to be coward, uh, broken down in a corner, but I can catch the hit that's coming my way if I'm in tune with the spirit. So the fear that I had about, man, I listen, brother, I couldn't walk. I couldn't move. And there was no uh, there, there was no quote unquote hope for me that was that was giving me the light at the end of the tunnel that they were saying like okay yeah this is just a minor hiccup you'll get back over it no no they were saying like you might have to live like this right Jesus. that's if you live so i'm in this place now where i'm like okay god now now what do i see here in this darkness and when i leaned into the darkness and when i saw the spirit move in the darkness and i walked out of the hospital they said i was going to die in Come that on, bro. Coming out of that darkness increased a level of faith in me Jesus. to where you can't tell me anything that has to come with any manner of sickness, disease, health, or whatever the case may be. Because I stand on the fact that I met him in the darkness. Wow. And the thing that tried to break me actually built the faith that I need so that I'm not responding to things in fear. So when something comes up and I'm feeling something is off, then I lean back into the darkness. Jesus. I don't, I don't, I don't look at it from the aspect of, okay, well, well, what if this happens again? Because I left out of the hospital, bro, and they gave me a bag of pills and it was several different medications. They told me I had to take them or I would relapse and there, it would be worse than it was before. And I knew God healed me. And I said, I'm not taking none of these pills, wow. none of them. And my mother was like, what? Absolutely not. And it was like, okay, but, 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 but they said that I know what they said, but I know I met God in the dark Dang. and we got to be willing. Cause see, here's the thing is that we're afraid of the dark. We want God to show up in the light. God, God do it. So where I can see it. No, no, no. I, I don't need you to see nothing. I need you to come in here to the dark and let me do what I need to do first in you because God's grace <sighs> develops you in the dark. So that when you step into the light, you have the character to sustain what he put in you in the dark. If he developed you in the light, everybody would see your process and then would minimize your call because they saw aspects of your process that were designed to be cultivated in the dark. Wow. But we're so afraid of the dark that we want God just just turn the light on. It's like that thing. And I don't know why we do this. I don't know if you've ever, you've ever done this. As a child, you go down and have to turn off all the lights in the basement and oh. you turn off the light and all of a sudden you start taking off up the stairs like something's Listen. chasing you. <laughs> you turn that light off and you booking it. Go I on. mean, you gone. 
because there's something about being alone in the dark that makes people uncomfortable. But when I realize that the dark places are the spaces that God has designed to start chiseling away, to start to start crafting things that, that need to be developed in me, to start molding me and shaping me. And just because I can't see it doesn't mean he's not working. Bro, you blew my mind on everything. Sometimes I love when you talk, but then I'm just like, you're it's too much. <laughs> that was crazy. So you said, oh my gosh, you talked about being afraid of the dark. You talked about developing in the dark. I just want to like freeze you right there. One, I think it's really interesting that even, you know, you hear kids say, oh, I'm scared of the dark. And you recognize that, you know, I, I'll give you a, a, a crazy example, and then I'm going to go back to the darkness. I remember my, my daughter that's 13 years old. She just graduated from uh, from middle school today. There was a huge water bug in my house when we were uh, when we were coming up, when we were in our first apartment that we were living in, and it was dead. And it was laying like in the corner of a room or whatever the case may be. This girl at the age of one and a half came, picked it up, and brought it. Like to my face and say, "Daddy, here." Listen to me. <laughs> I, I I looked at them. I just, <laughs> I said, Hold on, now what you do, bro? What you do? <laughs> I sla I slapped her hand. I tried to act. You know, I tried to thug it out. But here's the thing: I'm a grown man, and here's the thing: as she got older. The more she saw how afraid she should be, how afraid her surroundings, her parents and everyone else taught her to be. Now she's afraid of flies, birds, cats, all types that she's afraid. The thing is, it's just like the garden. Who taught you that you should be afraid of the dark? Because My you God. said that that's where development happens. The most drastic development of a human being's entire lifespan happens in the darkness of a womb. Where Jesus. a child goes from, from seed to fetus. I mean, the drastic development that happens in the womb for a child to come out with fingers and bones and spines and the details of the eye and the ear. More, more development happens in the womb than comparatively what happens over the span of, an, of a human being outside of the womb. So it tells me that if I'm afraid of darkness, then inherently life is teaching me to be afraid of development. Oh. And I'm I'm beginning to see that this the real parallel is not really being afraid of the dark it's being afraid of the spiritual realm, the realm that God desires for us to operate and lean on. Him. He says, I, 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 there's a people that and now is the time that those people shall worship me in spirit and truth, because God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth, walk in the spirit. So you will not uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh. All of this about the spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principal. And so I'm starting to realize that comfort our uh, you, you talked about the heightened sense and stuff like that in darkness. If development is happening there, then it also we're also kind of paying attention to the changes. What happens when we're in the light is we begin to grow so accustomed to daylight. We grow so accustomed to non-confrontation. We grow so accustomed mm. to a lack of demand on our spirit that we just live a flesh, a carnal state, not even sinful, a carnal state where there's a lack of expectation and a lack of move of God because God is not moving based on simply what we see, but he's moving based on the spirit. And so all of our energy, we talked about the power, man, I'm, I'm jumping a lot, but pay attention to me, please. No, I'm with you. I'm with the, you. Power, the, uh, the, the God is not given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, first and foremost, power. I believe a lot of our power, a lot of our energy is drained because of the wrestling, because of the tussling we do in the flesh. That Come God on. is saying, if you could just lean into the spirit, if you could lean into the dark, why is it the dark? Because it's the unknown. It's the part nobody wants to tap into. It's the part everybody wants to run away from. It's the part that culture and society is teaching you to be afraid of. But if you could stay here, Come here, yeah. The I said go play, pray in your closet, but Lord is dark. 
<laughs> I, 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 I'm calling you into a place where I can develop you. And, and yes, it's a closet. Yes, it, it, it's tight. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it's dark. But this is why I'm developing you. I'm calling you to learn how to see, not with just these physical eyes. You're wrestling like, well, let me just, you're, you're on this dating mission. Okay, I'm going to try these clothes. Well, I'm going to try to talk like this because this podcast, they do this. They say wear your hair like this. They say wear a lot of makeup. They say wear no makeup. And you're wrestling and you're doing all of these fights. So much warfare you're handling in the physical. You don't realize that there are spiritual elements set in place. There are declarations made against your life. There was a young girl I saw a few years ago and I told her, I was like, ma'am, I don't know you. But in the spirit realm, there is a declaration made for your singleness, mm. meaning you can do anything that you want. You will not be able to get in a relationship because it has been determined in the spirit realm that you will be single. The girl broke down. She was like, it's like I'm being haunted all my life. I cannot maintain a relationship. The girl's the sweetest, smartest most beautiful thing you could see. What is happening in the spirit where we're just afraid to lean in? God, what are you saying here? And how are you positioning me to break these curses of my generation? Help me to see and help me to be sensitive spiritually so I yeah. can access and navigate the places that most people are afraid to move. Go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. No, bro. Just, just, just what you were what talking, you talking about there is, is <laughs> the aspect of, of hearing and understanding the, the essence of of knowing the nuances of when you talked about the carnal mind and and how we're not necessarily afraid of the de the dark we're afraid of the development because the truth of the matter is is that when we are being developed we don't have control and i think some of our fear may be in the root aspect of relinquishing back control because when i trust god i don't resist i relinquish and and I think the true essence of having true relationship is is being in a space where I know that, like how you said, is that if God is in the dark, I want to be in the dark. That I'm running into the dark. That like like the the Hebrew boys throw me into the furnace. Because here here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is that if I'm standing on what I know about God, even if He doesn't do it my way. Because I think some of the fear may be not getting what I want. Some of the fear may be I have my my vision board. I have my goals. I have my checklist. I have my five, my 10, my 15 year plan. And I'm afraid that God is going to take me away wow. from the things that I desire. That's it. So what happens is now, because I'm afraid that I won't get what I want, then people now venture into this state where they are split and there's a duality. Come on. And now I and now they give pieces of themselves or half a part of themselves to the spirit, but I but they still keep this door open with culture and with my plans because yeah. I love you, God. I do, you know, but and they say it with their lips, but their heart is it's far because it, it, a heart that is not fully committed is a heart that is separated. So if I'm in a space now where I can't fully commit to God, then I'm in that place now where there's this duality here. And this is where we create this lukewarmness. Wow. Right. This is because the fear of me not getting what I desire will cause me to have one foot in uh, in the kingdom and one foot in culture because when people are scared that I, that they won't get their wish list or that God won't answer their prayers, then what they do subsequently is they hedge their bets is wow. that they will serve on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, they're going to work their plans, their dreams, and their goals. So the lukewarmness, which is honestly one of the places that is designed to create perpetual torment, because when you are split, you can never receive the full benefit, blessings, or the fulfillment from either space, right? Uh, I was talking with, with Steph today, and the thing that I was really looking at with the scripture where he was talking about how he says, God says, I wish that you would either be hot or cold. 
right? That the father wishes that you would be hot or cold. Now, I paused here because I said to myself, why wouldn't he just say, I wish that you would be hot? I, I wondered, I said, why wouldn't he just say, I wish that you would just sell out for me? But he said, I wish above all, you know, or, or, or not above all, but I, my, the desire is I would rather you be one or the other because at least you can be fully committed. Dang. And when you are fully committed, then you can actually experience the fullness of either season. Because if you have one foot in and one foot out because you're scared, you can't get the full benefits of the relationship with Christ. So you think it's not working. Wow. And then if you have one foot in culture, you can't fully get immersed in it to realize that that is not going to fulfill you. So That's what we crazy. do, that fear of not of feeling like they won't get what they desire oh, is that wow. it keeps you in the torment of having pieces of God and pieces of culture. And you never fully understand the fullness of, of the benefits of the relationship with Christ. And then you never fully experience culture to know that that's not going to fulfill you. So you walk the line because we want both. And the fear of saying, God, I just, I want you to answer my prayer. One, Let's me realize and understand that you don't know God for real. Dang. If you if the fear is God is not going to answer my prayer or give me what I desire or 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 do it the way that I desire or give me that boo or or give me that job, then you don't know God for real because me taking God, taking to God my limited perspective prayers is 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 a a a it's indicative of me knowing that I don't really understand who he is and where he sits. Wow. I don't understand his vantage point. When you get on a plane, brother, and we fly a lot. You fly you fly all over the world. You don't get in the plane and every 5 minutes go knock on the cockpit. Hey, wow. I'm just checking to make sure that we on the flight path. Um I'm just, you know, can can you tell me what you see up ahead? Is there something there that that you can sort of just give me some insight so I'll be cool while I'm on this plane. And in fact, the cockpit is locked with a special reinforced steel door to keep terrorists out. And I wonder, I wonder oh, go there. if the fear of me bringing my desires to God can be all almost presented as a terroristic attack on his plans. For me to bring my desire, it, and, and we wonder why God isn't, why He isn't negotiating with terrorists. I'm, I'm out of here because we keep bringing the toxic oh. to the truth, Dude. and He's saying, "I just need you to sit back and buckle your seatbelt." <laughs> Is the seatbelt sign on? Then I need you to have a seat. Yeah. Are you strapped into this word? Then have a seat. Oh. Are you strapped in in this prayer time? Then have a seat and let me fly this plane. Because the reality of the situation is you aren't trained for up here. You you may you may be able to fly or ride the vessel that's up here, but you haven't trained for up here. You don't know how to navigate this this height and this depth. And you can't, you don't necessarily, it's a different pressure up here. Mm. So much so that if you open the window because you see something that you like, the cabin will then pressurize. And he's saying that your fear of trying to get what you desire is going to run the risk of you opening up something that has the power to literally pressurize everything that's on the inside. So our fear, our fear of not getting what we desire creates a lukewarmness. And he says, you can never overcome the fear if you're split between two opinions. You can never get to the place where you're walking by faith if you won't make the choice to commit one way or the other. Jump in there, bro. Talk to me. There is nothing <laughs> to say. <laughs> Talk to me, bro. You you might as well just go into the prayer from there, bro. No, that that the airplane analogy was literally all I needed. That's 
Bro, don't honestly, seriously, bro. <laughs> so well, we, we listen. We we thank God. We thank God and we honor him for this time because here's the truth, man, is that our fears are are the the mirror or or the gateway to see where our heart is. Is that the more that I'm driven by fear? Now, there fear is it's a great thing to have because it keeps us aware, it keeps us mm-hmm. alert. But if I'm driven by that fear, then it shows me my heart posture mm. and it shows me that I haven't relinquished the flight path to the pilot. I haven't given him the reins Jesus. to take us where we need to go because it's not just trusting him when we get in the air, it's trusting him when we land I got to trust him when we take off. I got to trust him when I'm sitting on the plane and there's maintenance that he sees that needs to take place before we leave. I got to trust him when he navigates the, the flight path to go a different way because he sees the storm up ahead. I got to trust him because it's in that space that my fear will relinquish. Imagine being in turbulence and and the the plane starts to shake and you never hear from the pilot that's when your mind will take off well what's happening what's happening but when the pilot comes over the speaker jesus and says listen ladies and gentlemen just i i I know that there's some turbulence but it's only going to be for a moment that we're coming out of this in just a moment i can see up ahead and i know that this won't last long and in fact after you have suffered a while The God of all grace will perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And I know that things have been in a place where you're afraid to take a risk or afraid to step out and try again. But this is your captain speaking, and I want to let you know that even though you can't see what's up ahead, I have already stepped in tomorrow. And I can tell you that there will be joy in the morning. Oh, my. I can tell you that the places that you are in that have you broken and crippled by fear that I I'm already in tomorrow and I can tell you that there's joy in here I can tell you that there is more in store for you and I know that you've been dropped and broken and I know there may be a fear of you living a life completely sold out to God and and it seems like you're not getting what you desire and you are afraid to die unfulfilled Jesus but this is your captain speaking Jesus the Holy Spirit is saying this is your captain speaking and I know it's rocky right now Mm. I know it's tough right now I just need you to strap in. I need you to strap in and know that we're coming out of this storm. And we're going to get to the destination safely and on time. And that there's a fear that has had you crippled to believe that you missed the opportunity or that time is running out. Tonight we pray against the spirit of fear. Jesus. Father God, we bring you every issue, every thing, every every scenario that tries to create this anxiety about the future. Jesus. And this regret about the past that builds a fear that's louder than the faith. We pray, God, that you would silence the voice of fear. Jesus. And that you would come over our loudspeaker. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus. And let your voice be heard. Jesus. So that we can hear and understand that you will never leave nor forsake. Jesus. And that in your presence, despite what's going on outside, there is fullness of joy. Jesus. So the fear, God, that keeps your people crippled, we pray that it be broken here tonight. Jesus. We pray, God, that you break the chains of fear. 
that the things that we don't see and when we are uncertain and when there has been things that have entered into our perspective to try to get us to preserve ourselves, God, help us Jesus. to get silent and still. Yes, God. And remember the words that you've spoken. Yes, God. To recall the times that you brought us out before. Yes to be reminded and meditate on your word day and night. Let us hide your word in our hearts that we might not sin against yes. you to walk in fear and not in faith. That our lives will be driven to know that you are the same God that healed before. You're the same God that delivered. You're the same God who brought us out of Egypt Yes, God. Through the Red Sea. Yes, God. Through the wilderness. Jesus. And into this promised land. Thank you, Lord. So we won't be afraid of the giants in this land. Thank you, Lord. Because we know the God who brought us out. That's right. Of the places that we thought we would die in. Thank you, Jesus. So tonight, God. Thank you, let Jesus. Let hope rise. Let hope rise. Tonight, God. Reignite faith. Jesus. And tonight, God, help us to rest in knowing that you have it all yes, under God. control. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I pray for those who are fearful of doing what you've called them to do. Yes, God. Those who have been feeling a call and who have been scared because they are afraid of not living up to the potential. Yes. Who is that? Put it in the chat. If that's you, just say me. I feel that strong. If that's you, say me. If you've been fearful of saying yes to God because you don't think that you will be able to accomplish mm. <clears throat> what he is giving you to accomplish, that you feel inadequate. If that's you, put that in the chat. If there's a fear of inadequacy mm. where you feel God calling you, but you are scared to say, I see the me's coming in. You are scared to say yes. Tonight, I pray for your heart, your mind, and your perspective. I pray right now that everything that tries to grip you from saying yes to God, that you would understand that he did not call you to a place that he did not qualify you for. I speak to the faith in your heart and in your mind right now and cause it to rise. That faith will speak louder than your fear, knowing you. that he called you out of the boat, not so that you would drown, but so that you could walk on the waves with him. Yes, God. He's called you and qualified you, predestined you for the places that he has called you for. And I speak now against the spirit of fear and may it be bound up in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We bind up the spirit of fear and let it be broken and let power rise. Let love rise and let the yes, sound God. mind be restored. Yes, that fear would no longer hold you captive or cripple you. Jesus. May tonight be the night that you see that the trajectory of your faith shifts Jesus. and that you will step fully into who God has called you to be because where he's called you, he has qualified you. So I pray right now that your faith would rise and that you would know that God's plans are for you to give you a future and a hope Respect. so we thank it we thank you God for what you've said and what you've started here tonight that faith would rise and that fear would be silenced that your will would be done in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we do pray Amen. Glory be to God. Jesus. 
Oh, man. Oh, man. Just want to give God glory for the revelation that poured out through his vessel, man. Um, I'm just just so grateful, man. This is a really special space that God has uh, allowed us to be privileged to be a part of. Everyone that is family that taps in. Go ahead and invite your friends, invite your husbands, your sons, your daughters, everyone. This is a space where we can all grow and we can be developed in the dark together. Uh, praise God for your life, Will. Uh, thank God for the way he used you. That was really, I call it spiritual therapy when you begin to speak as the pilot with the voice of God, man. It was just something. I don't know. That's something. That's that's something. We're going to talk about that, man. Praise God. I'm just so grateful for this time. And I'm praising God that fear is being silenced in the lives of his people today. For those of you that are still tapped in, hey, we have a, a cash app, not forcing anybody to give anything, but we, we're we running everything on our own, we do our own editing. Sometimes we have teams that we pay to kind of carry some things out, but to make this thing get as big as we want it to get, we want everyone to be able to hear this message, want everybody to be blessed by what's what we're doing. Um, and that sometimes takes a little bit of extra. So if you guys can, you guys can actually sow by using that cash app in the description. It's just uh, that dollar sign. Um, the Soul Detox Show or the Soul yes. I mean, it's in the, it's in the chat. It's inside the uh, the description. You guys use it at will. Thank you guys already for your support. Those of you that have already supported, those of you that Absolutely. are continuing to support, and those of you that are just chiming in as family. We love and appreciate all of you guys. Next week, we love y'all. Be blessed. Bye.